Hi family and welcome to Wisdom for Life. My name is Brittany and I'm so excited to be joining you today. This week we're taking a look at a series titled Power Manifests in Our Relationship with God. We know the power of God is a real and wonderful thing, but it can only manifest in our true relationship with God. This series, Dad is teaching us how to deepen our relationship with God so we can experience His full power. Let's take a look at this together. What we have learned so far is that as much as people want to see miracles, see a move of God, see God do things in their lives, and, you know, it can be very easy to start to just chase after the things. Just one more, and even just, you know, a move of God, just to see the power, to feel the power. But the most important thing is to have a relationship. That is the most important thing, to walk close with God. That's why even the disciples, when they were shocked and amazed, yeah, in Luke chapter 10, how the demons were subject to them in the name. And then Jesus said over here, he said in verse 19, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will by any means hurt you. He says, if you walk with me, you're going to see power. But notice he said in verse 20, do not rejoice in this. It's almost like he's saying that you should just expect to happen. And then he says that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Know that God knows you. Rejoice that God knows you. Hallelujah. Lift your hand and say, when I was born again, my name was recorded in heaven. My Father knows me. Hallelujah. And we know that all power belongs to God. Psalm 62 verse 11. We know that power belongs to God. But Jesus himself said in John chapter 5 verse 19 to 20, he spoke about how him as the Son even Jesus said, I can do nothing of myself. If it was just me, Jesus, you wouldn't see the miracles you're seeing. And what happens is what he, the reason he's successful, he says, is because what he sees the Father do, that's what he does. And so he said in verse 20, the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. The Father loves the Son, and because he loves him, shows him everything that he himself does. In other words, Jesus has seen everything the Father does. He knows how the Father does it. Now, that's a wonderful thing to know. How many of you would like to know how God, our Father, does what he does? Well, Jesus did give us a promise in John 14, verse 12, that we would do greater works. Not only the same works of Jesus, but also greater works. And that's why in verse 23, he said that he would make our, he said that him and the Father would make their home with us. Look around and say, the Father and Jesus have made their home with me. Not just come and dwell, not just to move in, but to make home. In other words, relationship. Everybody say relationship. That's why I said in John chapter 17, verse 3, this is eternal life that we may know you, that we may know God. Some people will say, what is eternal life? Eternal life is not just about getting to the place heaven, getting out of hell and getting into heaven. Thank God that is the benefit of it. But that's not eternal life. Eternal life isn't even just knowing that you're born again. It's knowing God. Not just knowing about Him, not just knowing who He is, but knowing Him intimately. That was revealed in Psalm 103 verse 7 where God made known His ways to Moses. He made known His acts to the children of Israel. So everybody saw the miracles, but He showed Moses how. Hallelujah. That's why God moved through Moses so powerfully. And so we saw as we started having a look in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, how Solomon, after he had made that massive offering of a thousand bulls. Can you think about how long that must have taken? You know, for anybody that has a problem with a long offering, I mean, a thousand bulls, that must have taken all day. The whole service was just offering. And then what happened? That night, God showed up and said, Name whatever you want, I'll give it to you. And Solomon said in verse, 20, in verse 10, Now 
give me wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge. Everybody say wisdom and knowledge. And God was astounded. He said, you know, you could have asked for enemy, the life of your enemies. You could have asked for gold, silver, lands. But because you've asked this thing, I will give you the wisdom. Not only that, with that, you get the land and the silver and the gold and everything else you need to have. And so when he says, give me wisdom and knowledge, the Hebrew word used there for knowledge is the intelligence and consciousness. Intelligence or consciousness. In other words, give me understanding. I don't just want to know. I want to have intelligence about it. And that's what we see in Daniel chapter 1, verse 17, how God gave Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He gave them knowledge and skill and in all literature and wisdom. He gave them knowledge and skill and wisdom. Hallelujah. So, we want to learn from the Solomon. We know that he has walked in great wisdom. And he not only did that, he recorded his wisdom in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1, he says in verse 1 from the Amplified, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, that people may know skillful and godly wisdom and instruction to discern and comprehend the words of understanding and insight. Hallelujah. So we've been given the word of God so that we can know skillful and godly wisdom. Not just know about God, but be skillful in it. Know how to handle the word of God. And then also to walk in instruction and discernment and comprehension of the words of understanding. To understand what God means, what He says, when He says what He says. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 4. We saw in Proverbs chapter 4, He said in verse 5 that we need to get wisdom, get understanding. Verse 7, He said, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all your getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the very foundation. Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You see, just having a lot of money is not going to solve your problem. I know you think it will. People think, just, if I just had another million rand, all my problems would be over. No, with, with more money comes more responsibility and greater temptations. Come on. There, it's, it's already been proven by studies. They go back and visit people who've won these massive lotteries. 30 million rand, 80 million rand, ridiculous numbers. And then they go visit them a year later or two years later, five years later, and their lives are worse than they were before. They didn't have a money problem. It was a wisdom problem. See, if someone says, I have a drug problem. No, it's a wisdom problem. You can solve it if you understood what's going on here. Uh, marriage problem. No, it's a wisdom problem. Oh, problems with my children. <laughs> it's a wisdom problem. Wisdom is the principal thing. That's your foundation. And so he says, in all your getting, get understanding. Look at verse 8. Exalt wisdom. Wisdom will promote you. Not your boss. Wisdom. Hallelujah. How are you ready for promotion? You can get it. It's available from wisdom. Say wisdom might promote you. Wisdom will promote you. You want a promotion? Tie up with wisdom. Hallelujah. Wisdom will bring you honor when you embrace her. Wisdom will place on your head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory will she deliver to you. Hear my son, receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. When you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Don't let go. Keep wisdom. Wisdom is your life. Amen. Wisdom is your life. Now notice, it says here, we've learned two things. Number one, 
The word tells us that God gave Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Solomon wisdom. So who gave it to them? Say that. God gave them wisdom. And now we've just read, yeah, the second thing we learn is that we must get wisdom. So God's given the wisdom, but we've got to get wisdom. That tells me, just because you've been given it, doesn't mean it automatically works. So I put it to you that you already have wisdom. Okay, let's work it a little closer to home. How many of you are born again? Can I see your hands in our campuses as well? Now, can you remember the date you were saved? You remember the date? So what got you saved? By grace you saved by faith. It's not because of your works. It is a gift of God. When did God give you the gift? On the day you gave your life to Jesus? Think about it now. When was the gift given to you? Well, the word that I read, when Jesus died on the cross, when he died, he said, it is finished. Done. Nothing more for him to do. He has finished. He has paid the full price. And Paul said the same thing. He said that when Jesus rose from the dead, it is proof that all sin is paid for. Didn't he say that? Propitiation. God, God is satisfied. All death is, all sin is paid for. Amen. And then we keep studying, and we find out that was when Jesus physically died on the cross. But he was actually crucified before the foundation of the world. So before God even said, light be, before there even was a natural world, before the first human was even put on this planet, God had already paid the price. Hello? But you only found out about it on your calendar date. And then you said, I received that. But do you think if you gave your life to Jesus a year earlier, you would have been saved then? I'm not trying to trick you here. If you gave your life to Jesus a year before you did, you said, Lord, you are my Savior. Do you think you would have been saved then? So it wasn't reserved for the day you decided. It was available any time it was yours. It was when you said, I receive it. Then it manifested. Isn't that right? Does the word say, by Jesus' stripes, you have been healed? Does it say that? If it says that, lift your hand. Keep that hand up. Say, the word of God says, by Jesus' stripes, I have been healed. If I've been healed, then I am healed. But how many you only learned that after you were saved? So you've been plagued with sickness and disease and, and all kinds of symptoms and things. But then you found out later, I have already been healed. So all that time, we've just been putting up with sickness. We found out, oh, hang on. I don't have to anymore. Yeah. So now you can resist that sickness and disease and walk in your healing. Amen. Does the word say God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing? Yeah. Does it say that? Does it say God has supplied your every need? Yeah. Does it say that? Does he make grace abound towards you? You always have all sufficiency in all things. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. Well, does that always been in your case? Your bank account always been full? You've always had everything you need? No, you have to keep appropriating it by faith. Even Jesus, when he fed the 5,000, it was enough. There was a whole bunch left over. But you notice they didn't take what's left over and carry that around to the next meeting. No, at the next meeting, he multiplied again. Even Jesus had to draw by faith what was already there. But he knew he could. And every time he did, there was sufficient provision. Let me say it again. Could it be that you already have the wisdom that will promote you? It will give you life. Well, if he says, yeah, wisdom is your life, there's a key there. I said, there is a key there. 
Look at Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So if you want to know all things, remember Corinthians said, if you think you know everything, you know nothing. Now, if you want to know all things, it begins in a relationship with the Father. It begins in honor of God. Remember, for those that haven't learned this yet, the fear of the Lord is not as in evil fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. That's a demonic fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. This is talking about deep respect and honor. Deep respect and honor. So in deep respect and honor, that's where knowledge begins. So it begins in the presence, in the relationship with God. Say that. Knowledge begins in my relationship with God. Look at Proverbs chapter 2. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom. See, we have to pursue it. Incline your ear to wisdom. Apply your heart to understanding. Now, you know he's not talking about that meat pump inside your chest. Your, your meat pump can't think any more than your finger can. No, he's talking about your spirit, man. Your whole spirit, your whole being. Apply your spirit, man, to understanding, to hear understanding. Apply your heart to understanding. Verse 3, yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek wisdom as silver, search for wisdom as for hidden treasures. If you notice how the world is running after money and things, everybody, they, they will work from before sunrise to after sunset trying to get finances. And he says, if you put that much effort into gaining wisdom, verse 5, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. Then you will understand your relationship and you will find the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. This isn't just the knowledge you're going to learn in a university. This is the knowledge that God has. Can you imagine knowing everything God knows? Why? Verse 6. The Lord gives wisdom. From His mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He stores up sound wisdom for the so, family of God, if we're running around doing stupid things, you know, just sinning and doing crazy things, well, maybe God will forgive me, you know, I'll just, just go out there and be wild and crazy. No wonder people's lives get messed up. Only live once. Yeah. Stupidly. You don't want to live a stupid life, I'm sure. Come on, did, did I name any names now? Or did I criticize anybody? No, I'm saying we need to make a decision. Even Proverbs chapter 1 says, Oh, simple ones, how long will you love simplicity? Can I put that in more easier to understand terms? Hey, stupid, how long are you going to stay stupid? We've got to make a decision. I said we have to make a decision here. How many of you want wisdom? Notice it says here, that we are the ones that must go find that knowledge. God has given wisdom. Verse 7. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He's a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice. And he preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness. You will understand justice. You will understand equity. You will understand every good path. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. Ham, you never want to falter again. Here's your answer. 
Here's your answer. How many of you want to tap into this wisdom more than ever before? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. There's good news. I said there's good news. This is why it's called the gospel. The beginning of your gospel, the beginning of the good news is Jesus loves you, gave his life for you, died for your son, paid the full price, rose from the dead, and if you believe he's alive, call him Lord and Savior, you'll be saved. Now that you're saved, the gospel continues. There's more to it than just eternal life. And he says here in chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians, verse 30, of him you are in Christ Jesus. Once again, how many of you born again? Lift your hand. Keep the hand up and say, I am born again. Therefore, I am in Christ Jesus. Now listen to this. Who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Oh, hallelujah. You're not excited yet? Get a hold of this. How many of you have been sanctified? How many of you have been redeemed? How many of you have been made the righteousness of God? Those same people, Christ has become for you wisdom. It's not something else you have to try and get a hold of. Now I've got Jesus, now I must find wisdom. Didn't he say wisdom is your life? Didn't Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life? The moment you were born again, Jesus moved into your life. He came to make his home in you. Wisdom moved in. How many of you desire to see the power of God in your life? You want to see miracles, signs, and wonders? As believers. We can all operate in the power of God. There's a demonstration power that God wants to show His presence so that people will be attracted to know who this God is. In this series, Alan Bank shares how relationship comes before power. You will see power because of your relationship. In this series, you will learn that relationship with the Father enables Jesus to fulfill His purpose. I believe we need to renew our mind. Through relationship comes power, and that power is for a purpose. Visit us online or make use of any of these details. But get hold of your series, deepen your relationship with the Father, and discover the key to seeing God's power working through your life. Jesus operated in power because of relationship with the Father. How amazing is that? Now that is just one of the things that you could learn from this series. I really want to encourage you to get a hold of a copy of these. You can contact us at the details below and get your hands on a copy and watch your relationship with Jesus deepen even further. Now my friend, to experience the full power of God, it begins with a relationship with Jesus. And if you have not yet accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like to give you the opportunity to do that right now. So let's pray this together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus. I believe he died and rose again. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And congratulations, my friend. We are so excited that you have made this decision. If this was your first time making this decision, please won't you contact us at the details below. There's a free gift that dad would like to get into your hands. There are a few tools to help you build your faith and encourage your new relationship with Jesus. So just contact us at the details below and we'll get that to you right away. Well, family, that's all we have time for today. I want to encourage you to join us again tomorrow so that we can continue learning about our relationship with God. This is Brittany reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Life is a choice. Choose life. Visit Allen Bag Ministries online. At allenbagministries.org 
You can find out more about Alan Bagg, the call of God on his life, and more about who we are as a ministry. On our website, you will also be able to connect with us by making use of our contact details. You will also find out about the heartbeat of Alan Bagg Ministries and how you can know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Hello, my friend. My name is Alan Bagg and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. On our website, you will be able to watch our current television programs as well as catch up on any previously broadcast programs you may have missed. You will also be able to find the platforms we are broadcasting on as well as join us for our live streamed services at the Bay Christian Family Church over the weekends and special occasions. On our website, you can find out how to get involved as a partner or even find out more information about partnering with Allen Bag Ministries. You can also make use of our easy-to-use giving facilities on our website and get involved in the many projects and ways available. Through the grace of God, Allen Bag Ministries help many to get through the challenges they face on a daily basis. And our heart is to help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org and let us help you identify and succeed in what the Lord has called you to do. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details.